that could produce anywhere from three to four, maybe as much as five inches of snow on uh, Wednesday. Uh, but we're going to have to see on that, Jim, uh, K1GZL. Roger, Roger. Well, you know, uh, sometimes they run the weather forecaster out of town on the rail if he's wrong, particularly like an Indian. If the weather forecaster is wrong, they have a tendency of, of uh, chasing him out of town, Roger. Chasing him out of town, Roger. Well, the, the only thing you can do is the best you can do uh, with the instru- instruments you have in front of you uh, however, it, uh, uh, it uh, you know, uh, that's a little thing, a little on the strict side, a little bit on the strict side. Uh, anybody that's had a meteorological, uh, you know, uh, experience, and a meteorological weather experience, if they don't, uh, if they don't, uh, from, you know, it, it, all you can do is the best you can do, but if you live in a society where they uh, don't, uh, uh, can't stand for mistakes, uh, you've got problems, at least in this country, uh, uh, I don't think that's the case yet, I mean, Y-E-T, uh, yet, Jim, that would be horrible, uh, uh, but uh, the only thing to do is do the best you can do and hope. Roger, Roger, that's it. You know, uh, I can just foresee uh, like a big ham fest or something that's supposed to be on the weekend. And the weatherman says, oh, it's going to be 20 feet of snow. And everybody cancels the, uh, 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 you know, the ham fest. And then it turns out to be uh, uh, no, no rain <laughs> or snow. Yeah, or snow. I hate to see everything canceled and the whole thing goes bust. B-U-S-T, in other words, uh, nothing happens. Nothing happens, whereas you have forecasted uh, a major storm, uh, either rain or snow or whatever. Uh, But we're way, way behind normal for the snowfall this season. I've only measured totally, if you add all our snows up, only 3.2 inches. By now, we should have had uh, at least 25 or 30 inches by this date. Uh, this is uh, uh, this this is incredible, absolutely incredible. Uh, the uh, the way it's shaping up so far, Jim. Go ahead. Roger, Roger. Well, you know, just so long as you can. Uh you can uh, motivate around uh, a little bit. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, uh, if you do happen to have four foot of snow, it makes things rather rather difficult for a while. Uh, and sometimes, uh, you know, when the snow plows come by, they uh, plow their street and put another couple of feet on top of yours, Roger. On top of yours, Roger. Oh, well, yeah. Unfortunately, that happens. But the town here plows you out. Uh, the town here uh, in Clarksville, they do plow out, fortunately, because when they have to, and there's so darn much snow, uh, the average, the average uh, is about 195 inches a year, 195. But last year, my gosh, but I wasn't here a lot of the time last year. I was not here, so, uh, but I suspect it was about 125 uh, that's about the lightest it ever gets in a whole uh, in a whole year. Uh, about as light as it ever uh, gets. Uh, but the previous 22 years before that, the average was 195 inches. Some years, well over 200 inches. Go ahead. Oh, Roger. Well, my town would close down for sure if. Uh they got uh, any kind of uh, snow in that quantity, Roger? In that quantity, Roger? Uh, yeah, it depends what uh, what your area is used to. Uh, you take uh, you take down in uh, Portland, Maine, 
uh, I think they average about 65 inches a year, period. That's it. They average 65 inches a year, and the same around southern New Hampshire and Concord, around 65 inches a year. You get down to Boston, they average about 45, 48 inches, 45 to 48 inches. You get into the New York uh, City area, you average about 30 inches, 30 inches a year. You get into Washington, D.C., depending on which side of Washington you're talking about, on the east side of Washington, around, uh, oh, I don't know, 18 to 20 uh, two inches. You get on the west side, uh, one of the airports there, I think you get about 25 inches a year. It all depends where your average is, your mountain sloping, and everything else. And everything else uh, can uh, take uh, take action. But uh, you, you sound great uh, today, uh, Jim. Uh, you're coming in just as uh, clear as a bell. Direct, direct. KC, oh, there's the sun. It just came out in my face here. KC9VKV, K1GZL. Roger, Roger, Charlie. Well, you know, if, uh, like in Indiana, they say, if you don't like the weather, stick around for a couple of minutes and it'll change completely. And maybe that holds true for propagation and Mother Nature, you know. And she says, oh, oh, well, uh, I'll let you uh, get out a little bit uh, today, Roger, Roger. Good uh, today, Roger, Roger. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, uh, that's uh, true. Uh, and, uh, but uh, the, the, the same uh, up here, if you don't like the weather, just wait. I, or, I, I never forget the time that Ian, VK3MO, was here, uh, gee, about two years ago in April, or was it three years ago, I forget, on uh, April 4th. At that time, we had uh, 45 to 50 inches of snow on the level ground. Uh, and uh, the sun was out, and all of a sudden we had a blinding snow uh, come down, uh, and uh, he uh, says, Charlie, we're having a blizzard. We're having a blizzard. I said, no, Ian, just uh, in 10 minutes we're going to have to pull the shade down. The sun will be out, and he couldn't believe it. 10 minutes later, I had to pull the shade down because that was a squall. And I told them what a snow squall was, and, uh, and uh, the sun came right out uh, afterwards, though. Oh, Roger that, Roger that. Well, I guess we all get accustomed to our own location, and uh, that's why we are probably living where we are, because we, we uh, endure the situation, Roger. Roger. Well, we have to endure it. We have to endure it. <laughs> what would we do if we didn't? Uh, yeah, but right now, it, uh, the sun is shining through uh, high and middle deck uh, clouds, breaking uh, through it, but it is going to cloud up, I mean, more and start raining in about two or three hours. Okay, Jim, I guess we're getting... Oh, we are getting close to time. I'll let you uh, start up there. And uh, I'll just do the best I can with this thing today. Oh, boy, what a, what a mess. KZ9VKV, K1GZL. I'm still good on Milford. Roger, Roger, Charlie, 30 over still. Uh, catch you in uh, a couple of minutes. This is KC9 VKV with just a heads up. The regular Friday afternoon QSOV like net will be starting in uh, 90 minutes, 90 seconds, <laughs> sorry, at 3.30 on this frequency. At 3.30 on this frequency. This is KC9 VKV checking New York SDR. This is KC9 VKV checking New York SDR. Kilo Charlie 9 Victor, Kilo Victor checking New York. Kilo Charlie 9 Victor, Kilo Victor checking New York. KC9 VKV checking Pennsylvania. VKV checking Pennsylvania. 
KC9 VKV checking Georgia. KC9 VKV checking Georgia. KC9 VKV checking Virginia. KC9 VKV checking Virginia. KC9 VKV checking uh, Kentucky. KC9 VKV checking uh, Kentucky. And good afternoon, everyone. This is Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor. My name is Jim, and this is the Friday Afternoon Kiso Vlog Network. This is a directed network, and I am net control. If at any time during this net, should an emergency arise, please notify net control, and we'll stand by and allow those in need to access this frequency. Is there any priority or emergency traffic at this time? Any priority or emergency traffic at this time? And hearing nothing, we will continue. This net is all about ham radio and being all that you can be. That's what our QSO VLOG network is all about, trying to help people achieve the best sounding station possible. Thanks for dropping by. FYI, my background is 50 years in commercial broadcasting, where a lot of big bucks are spent on audio processing equipment and getting it set up correctly to get the best sounding station possible. Well, long story short, when I became a ham radio operator, I could hear immediately a large discrepancy in on-air technical proficiency. A lot of stations were running with very poor mic equalization, very muddy, with little articulation. And as I continued to work stations, I realized most of the stations were running very low average peak modulation, many around 30% of average peak modulation. So with my background, I felt I could help or at least try. I knew that most modern day ham transceivers did have enough onboard processing equipment to be able to overcome most all of the problems. So it would just be a matter of developing a generic dynamic range setup procedure and then adjusting the onboard EQ gear. And so I started the QSO VLOG network with the phrase, if you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. And today, we're currently featuring over 2,800 QSO VLOG air check recordings. And you can access these recordings by going to YouTube and doing a call letter search for KC9VKV, followed by the word logbook. That's Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor, followed by the word logbook. And we also have a newer series called KC9 VKV Highlights. That's Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor, followed by the word Highlights on a YouTube search. These are some of our less technical and more human nature philosophical kinds of QSOs. That's KC9 VKV, followed by the word Highlights on a YouTube search. Both KC9 VKV Logbook and KC9 VKV Highlights are segments of our main YouTube homepage of Jim's Radio Story, where we celebrate a 50 year career in commercial broadcasting. A 50 year journey from a 5 watt pirate radio station as a 12 year old to production director of a major 50,000 watt AM broadcast facility. And the thing that makes this truly a unique story is that I have all the actual masters from all along the way. Over 2,600 shows, including many full-length major music concerts and radio documentaries. You'll have to check it out and subscribe. Jim's Radio Story on a YouTube search. Our mission statement for the QSO VLOG network is to establish a higher technical level of radio transmissions of the human voice by the intelligent utilization of available electronics in current amateur radio transceivers. Our setup, while generic in nature, converts the average 10 dB dynamic range transmitter with an average 30% of peak modulation to a much fuller 3 dB dynamic range with an average 80 to 85% of peak modulation. This substantial boost in audio transmit level is extremely beneficial in high noise levels and heavy QRM. It allows you to punch through when others fail. The second part of our transmitter setup has to do with proper mic equalization. We're looking to optimize the transmitted voice for a higher degree of intelligibility through the use of EQ patterns that bring out the articulation aspects of the human voice. Again, why need to hear the voice if you can't understand the words? 
Also this afternoon on the receive side, we're running five internet SDR receivers, monitoring New York, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and Virginia specifically. And in addition, we're running our new number five Hocus Pocus internet SDR receiver, loaded with 50 additional pre-programmed internet SDR locations spread out over 20 states across the eastern half of the United States, trying to get the best copy from our 100 watt friends. Now the audio from these five SDR receivers comes up on a six position rotary selector. Also today on the e-transmit side, we'll be running our no SWR specially oriented resonant tuned dipole antenna. One leg of this resonant tuned dipole antenna runs broadside to Montreal, Canada. The other leg runs broadside to Miami, Florida. As we were constructing our station, our mantra was 20 over from Montreal to Miami with a hot spot through the Carolinas. And although conditions may vary, the general performance of this antenna supports its mission. Also today we'll be running our input source indicator. So when we switch from an internet SDR receiver to our local receiver, you'll be able to hear the switch and see the switch. You'll have to check it out on our YouTube QSO VLOG video. As we come together for another Friday afternoon QSO VLOG network, let us pause just a moment for the amateur radio operator's prayer. Lord, we pray for clear 20 over S9 communications today. Let all our transmissions fill the air and reach their destinations QSA 5 to be understood by all. As we pray for good radio conditions, let us also pray for good human conditions. During this time of pandemic that has challenged us all, we pray that you'll protect everyone, especially our elderly. And also, Lord, we seek your divine intervention to bring peace to a very divided United States. As we go through a very conflicting time in America's history, with dark clouds all around, we pray that you'll reduce life's daily political QRM between our brothers and sisters. And through your love and guidance, show us the way to find peace and harmony. Help us to communicate with one another 20 over S9. Thank you, Lord, and God bless and protect America. Amen. To continue, since this part of the band has many nets trying to operate in a very confined area, I would appreciate all stations checking into our QSO VLOG net to keep their band paths to no wider than 100 to 2900. And again, please, no wider than 100 to 2900. This is the Friday afternoon QSO VLOG network. And now let's check in and see if Charlie K1GZL is on frequency to bring us up to date on the latest 40 meter band propagation. Charlie's QTH is up north in northern New Hampshire, near the Canadian border. Charlie, got a copy? Good. Charlie, got a copy? Yes, Jim, a beautiful copy. You're coming in uh, from 5 over to 20 over direct direct of course we're on standard time i don't have the capability of any str reception but you're doing an absolutely excellent job excellent job here and uh, i hope uh, you're copying okay i would imagine through milford and the northeast pennsylvania go ahead yes sir uh, 35 over on milford this afternoon roger this afternoon, Roger. Okay, well, thank you very much. Now, my cassette recorder is acting up. In fact, I may have to get another one, and I don't think I'm recording. Uh, well, this this was originally recorded electronically, uh, but the playback is not uh, going out uh, electronically. So uh, this is a, a VK uh, about a week and a half ago on 20 meters in eastern Australia, uh, pretty well north of uh, Sydney. That's a little off the side of my... Uh, uh, three-element wire, uh, diamond-shaped quad. But let me see if it, uh, it will pick up. Uh, what? My name's Dennis. I'm on the Pacific East Coast. Uh, Chuck, over. Nine, no hit. Yeah. Nine, no hit. Yeah. I hope you haven't been incarcerated. It's about four years or more since we spoke on the side on 40 minutes. Okay. 
Okay, uh, Jim, uh, there we are. I know the quality probably was not very good. It looks like I may have to get another cassette. This one is not working properly. Uh, uh, KC9VKV, was it readable? K1GZL. Yes, sir, Charlie. Just had a little bit of uh, shack noise uh, uh, room uh, reverb, Roger. Yeah, that's the part of the problem. That's part of the problem. Uh, the earphones are not working. The earphones are not working uh, with the whole system, and it is more or less exposed, more or less exposed. So, uh, but that I hope can be rectified if I can get another uh, cassette here, especially the exact. Uh, model that I have at the moment. Okay, Jim, look, I won't hold it any longer. Uh, always a pleasure uh, working you uh, down there, and uh, eventually I'd like to get uh, the amplifier really working here, uh, but as I mentioned, uh, due to the, I'm putting in about 400 watts, but I don't think I'm getting more than 350 getting to the antenna. Uh, with the extreme length of coaxial uh, cable. So, Jim, I'll turn it back to you, and uh, we'll try to catch you uh, next week with something a little bit uh, better than I have at the uh, present time. KC9VKV. Hello, Jim. Um, I'm testing for modulation to see if this thing is working. K1GZL. Roger, Roger, Charlie, there for a minute. I thought I was uh, producing uh, 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 a King Kong movie. <laughs> Sounds great, Charlie. 73 up that way. And uh, we'll be looking forward to uh, joining you next Friday. You have a great afternoon and a beautiful weekend. Uh, and just a reminder, this is the Friday afternoon QSO VLOG Network. My name is Jim, KC9VKV, and I'm better known in some circles as Dr. VKV. And we're recording now live till 5, so if you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. We'll post this recording up on YouTube in the next couple of days. So when you go to YouTube, just do a call letter search for KC9VKV, followed by the word logbook. That's Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor, followed by the word logbook. And that will take you to our YouTube QSO VLOG page, where we're currently featuring over 2,800 QSO VLOG air check recordings. This recording will be cut number one in that series. So, without further ado, let's open it up and see who we have out there. Uh, if you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Kilo, Kilo, 4, Papa, Queen, Kilo, 4. The uh, Kilo, Kilo, 4 station, uh, come back uh, again with your call sign, slowly, uh, phonetically, please. Call sign, slowly, uh, phonetically, please. Kilo, Kilo, 4, Papa, Quebec, Uniform. Papa, Quebec, Uniform, Roger, and what's the name there? Uh, Papa, Quebec, Uniform, Roger, and what's the name there? Uh, the name here is Willard, Jim. All right, Willard, and uh, what uh, radio are you running today? Willard, and uh, what uh, radio are you running today? I'm running the Yezu FTDX-10. Back to you. Roger, Roger, FTDX-10. And uh, whereabouts are you located, Willard? FTDX-10. And uh, whereabouts are you located, Willard? I'm here in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, I had you help me set up my 7300 a few weeks ago, and go uh, and uh, I've just gotten this Yezu, and I think I've got it uh, set pretty well the way I like it. Uh, just wanted to get your opinion and see how you think it sounds on your end. Roger, Roger, Willard. Where the first thing would be to make sure you're in that uh, 100 to a 2900 uh, transmit band pass. 100 to 2900 transmit band pass, Roger. 100 to 2900 transmit band pass, Roger. Roger, Roger. I think I'm, uh, I think I'm in that. I'm going by the M4 HN8 setting, so I think I am in that. All right, then uh, compression uh, processor on at a 3 uh, out of uh, 10 or 30 out of 100, Roger. A 3 uh, out of uh, 10 or 30 out of 100, Roger. 
QSL, yeah, I don't want to change any settings. Just wanted to see how you thought it sounded. Back to you. Well, that's what I'm saying, sir. I think you're, you, you could be fatter uh, and uh, just as clean. So uh, I just wanted to do a, you know, a normal setup to be sure that, uh, uh, you know, we can get you a, a little bit fatter there. And that is our, is our process. But uh, you are now, you know, about maybe 5 dB dynamic range, where we usually shoot for about a 3 dB dynamic range. Makes a difference. Uh, uh, 3 dB dynamic range is about 80 to 85 percent of uh, uh, peak modulation, Roger. 85 percent of uh, uh, peak modulation, Roger. QSL, QSL. Um, just wanted to uh, get your opinion, and uh, I appreciate it, Jim. Roger, Roger. Well, uh, like I say, uh, you, need, you might need to uh, to uh, to check your uh, ALC uh, level. You know how to do that. Uh, just uh, uh, go to your ALC meter with mic gain in hand, say the word audio, and adjust your mic gain until your ALC is reading uh, two-thirds, or seven. I think uh, seven in the case of that uh, TDX-10, Roger. I think uh, seven in the case of that uh, TDX-10, Roger. Just so audio. That's a little hot. Let me turn the mic gain down a little bit. Okay, there we are. Okay, that's why I wanted to set your your uh, compressor first because it sounds like you might be uh, higher than uh, three in your compression setting, and so therefore you're kind of sucking up between words. We suggest a three out of ten or thirty out of a hundred on the compression level, Roger. And and the whole idea is that there is a sequence. I mean, if you set your mod level before and then go back and do things in front of that, you've really uh, uh, negated the level that you set the first time. So by doing this it sequentially, uh, you don't have to go back and ret retune that much. Uh, and so that's why I wanted to uh, check your compression level, and we get that under control at about a 3 out of 10, uh, 30 out of, I think on your uh, FTDX10, it's a 30 out of 100, Roger. On your uh, FTDX10, it's a 30. Out of a hundred, Roger. QSL. I think you're right. Uh, I've got it on 30 now. It was on 17. There's 30. Yes, sir. Okay, then uh, I'll do that uh, uh, ALC setup uh, uh, again, same way you did, and uh, let's uh, see what that does, Roger. Uh, again, same way you did, and uh, let's uh, see what that does, Roger. Roger, Roger. Audio. Yeah, that's about right there, Jim. All right, now uh, let's uh, move to your equalization page, and uh, with, uh, you know, uh, I, yeah, I guess you are in that uh, ALC uh, mode, uh, I mean, the, uh, oh, gosh, I'm having a mental breakdown here, <laughs> your uh, uh, TBW, your, your transfer bandwidth, uh, we're, we're assuming that that's going to be uh, uh, in the... 100, uh, 100 to 2900, and then that's very important too because if you run in a lesser mode, you're going to be losing your top end intelligibility. The further off 2900 or below 2900 you go, the more top end you lose off uh, of your audio. So we suggest that, uh, you know, verifying that you are in that 100 to 2900 uh, transmit uh, bandpass mode. But uh, once past that, uh, we go to. Um, the uh, equalization and uh, we want to do uh, let's see here uh, first uh, make sure that your mic EQ is set to on because we can do all kinds of uh, operations on your EQ but if your mic EQ is not set to on it won't make any difference Roger your mic EQ is not set to on it won't make any difference Roger 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 yeah I've already uh, got all that set up Jim just wanted your opinion, and uh, I'll let you get back to it. I appreciate all your help, and uh, you have a good one there. All righty. Uh, let's see here. You uh, let me li listen to you on my local antenna, if you if you would mind. Oh, I don't mind at all. Go ahead, KK4 PQU. Yeah, looks good. You got a nice response in the bottom end. Could use just a touch of uh, uh, additional trouble. Uh, and uh, it would be uh, uh, 2.9 
kilo, uh, 2.7 kilohertz uh, plus uh, two clicks from where you are. 2.7 uh, kilohertz plus two clicks from where you are. Roger. QSL. Bottom end uh, looks good. I'm running a 7300, which is good down to, uh, to 100 cycles, and my monitor system is good down to 50 cycles. Roger. Roger, Roger. So, Willard, I think you got it going on there, bud. Uh, looks to be now that your uh, dynamic range is about right. And like I say, we just touch up that top end a little bit, and uh, I think we get the Gorilla Tape out and taper down. All righty there. I sure do appreciate it. And uh, we'll be talking to you soon. 73s, my friend. Roger, you have uh, frequency response down to, looks like about... Uh, Oh, 125 cycles, uh, and then it starts to, to roll at about 125 cycles. And it looks to be about minus 4 or 5 at 100 cycles. So anyway, uh, 73 there, Willard, and uh, thanks for checking in. If you want to hear your audio, if you go to YouTube, uh, do a call letter search for KC9VKV, followed by the word logbook. That will bring uh, this recording up. It will be cut number one in a series of 2,800. And I'll have it uploaded by noon tomorrow. And you'll notice uh, off to the right-hand side, there's that uh, chevron that uh, tells you uh, from where I'm listening from. And uh, so uh, you can hear, or you can see that, uh, what you sound like in different uh, parts of the country. Roger? No, oh, QSL, very cool. Very cool. Oh, QSL, very cool. Very cool. And I was just rolling around there. Let me hear you down in Virginia, or up in Virginia. Uh, you have a good rep here at there. 73, thanks for your help. Yes, sir, Willard, we just doubled <laughs> up in Virginia. You're sounding great everywhere. 73, sir, you have a great afternoon, beautiful weekend. And if you get a chance, join us next Friday. We'd love to have you. This is the Friday afternoon QSO Vlognet. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Like that? If you have a radio or you want to check out, give me a shout. W-A-8-O-P-R, W-A-8-O-P-R, Jim. Uh, O-P-R, Roger, Roger, and is that uh, Terry? Uh, O-P-R, Roger, Roger, and is that uh, Terry? It is, Jim, it's Terry. We're in Farmington, Michigan, Farmington, Michigan. We've got an old, old radio, and we'd like to just uh, see what you think. He had a great copy here, 20 over 9, and basically Detroit. KC9, VKV, over. Oh, Roger, Roger, Terry. Okay, why don't you give me about 10 seconds or 15 of tell me about your antenna, and let me look for uh, a better path. Roger, the best path. And let me look for uh, a better path. Roger, the best path. Okay, I'm running a 37-foot annotation up about 50 feet with the uh, up about 50 feet with a little bit hot air. Ground rod, and the rig, whoops, a little bit hot air, hold on. And the rig is a, wait a minute, hold on. there we go. And the rig is a uh, old Kenwood TS 930. That's probably a good 35 years old gem. Uh, no processing. Back to you, gem. Yes, sir. No processing. Uh, you do have uh, uh, ALC, though, Roger. Yes, sir. No processing. Uh, you do have uh, uh, ALC, though, Roger. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that is set to uh, about mid-range right, right now. Uh, back to you, Jim. Okay. You want to be uh, just a little bit uh, hotter than that. You want to be on to the right side of center on your ALC meter, Roger. That. You want to be on to the right side of center on your ALC meter, Roger. Yep. I got it. Well, that's where I normally run it, right about there. And I will uh, now turn on my processor. And processor is running about, what is that thing? Oh, it's probably a little bit too hot. Uh, let's see, you can bring that down. You said about three, three, and that's about where I am with processing, Jim, over. Roger. That, or, you know, depending, if, you, if you're uh, 0 to 100 on your processor input level, you would be at a 30. If you're 0 to 10 on your processor level, you would be at 3, Roger. If you're 0 to 10 on your processor level, 
You would be at three, Roger. Yeah, I'm running processing about three right now. So uh, that's it. But I, I can't expect much from an old radio. You know, it is what it is kind of thing. But, uh, well, what do you think, Jim? Back to you. Yes, sir. Uh, it sounds pretty good uh, without equalization. Uh, you know, the other, like I say, though, we uh, can always improve the uh, uh, treble to bass uh, uh, um, balance by pulling off mic just a little bit, you know. Like if you're at five inches now, if you pull back to about seven and then bump your uh, mic gain up, uh, you would increase your top uh, uh, frequency response over your bottom frequency response for uh, added intelligibility, Roger. Bottom frequency response for uh, added intelligibility, Roger. Oh, sure. I got it. Um, well, I've backed off the mic quite a bit, and I think that's about right. I'll turn the processing off, and I see I've got to increase. Whoops. Hold on. There we go. Okay, now there's no processing. This uh, microphone does have a tone control, but I have no idea where to send it, Jim. Back to you. Uh, well, uh, gosh, uh, first off, um, uh, I would leave that uh, uh, compressor on, your processor compressor, I would leave that on, but only at a third of its pa uh, capabilities. Uh, like I say, a 3 out of 10 or 30 out of 100, uh, you're, uh, you're, you should be uh, uh, 30 out of 100, I would think. Is your, is your input level to your processor uh, a 0 to 10 or 0 to 100? Zero to ten or zero to a hundred? Uh, hold on, Jim. Uh, it's just, just a red uh, red line there, and it just shows zero to fifteen dB, and I've got it at. Uh, where have I got it at? I'll turn it down a bit. There, there is about. That's definitely about a 30, based on what you said, Jim, over. Yes, sir. Okay, so that would be a t uh, 33, and uh, 15 would be half, so uh, maybe you want to run it at about uh, a 10, about a 10 on that radio, or on your uh, processor uh, level, Roger. Radio, or on your uh, processor uh, level, Roger. I got it, Jim. Hold on. Well, in that case, we got to increase it just a little bit. Zero, two, two. That may be a little bit... Uh, I think that's about right. That's as close as I can get it right now, Jim. Yes, sir. Okay, now let's go to your... Uh ALC and set your ALC level uh, with microphone in microphone level in, control in hand, and as you say the magic word audio, adjust your uh, ALC level to uh, a seven on your um, your ALC meter, Roger. A seven on your um, your ALC meter, Roger. I got it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Two, 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 two. One, two, audio, audio, audio. That's about it, Jim. Yeah, it looks good. It looks like about uh, 3 dB on the uh, snarls there as far as your dynamic range of audio. And I think now that, uh, you know, uh, you did back up a little bit, so I think you have a little bit better uh, top end to bottom end relationship, Roger, to mid range. Uh, top end to bottom end relationship, Roger, to mid range. Thank you, Jim. Once again, thanks for your help. Uh, you know, you got a radio that's made 35, 40 years ago. Can't expect miracles out of it, right, Jim? Yes, sir. Now, now that I listen to your signal a little bit more there, Terry, I, I do hear some uh, mechanics in the background there. Sound like a blower or something. So uh, you might uh, not, well, depending. If you don't want a bunch of stuff in the background, you might uh, need to pull yourself back into that closer microphone uh, level of proximity effect uh, as, as you were. I didn't notice it off the bat, but uh, now that we've opened it up a little bit, I, I did hear some, um, it sounds like uh, um, blower motor uh, background, Roger. Uh, um, blower motor uh, background.
background. Roger. Oh, there is one. Yeah, the uh, I was always concerned about the TS-930, the automatic control for the fan coming on the final. So I had wired a fan in there with a the control, and I've got it at max. So you're you're hearing a fan noise, Jim. Over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, there's two ways to cure that. I would go back, I guess, uh, go back to your original uh, proximity to microphone. Uh, go back to your original distance to microphone. Uh, signal to noise uh, is much better there than where you where you are. I didn't notice that uh, that uh, mechanical noise in the background. And if we can't shake it there, uh, then we probably uh, want to uh, just dump the uh, compressor. But let's take it one by one. So just uh, go back to your uh, original uh, position to microphone, and let me hear you there, Roger. Original. Uh, position to microphone and let me hear you there, Roger. I got it. Okay. I'm going to, uh, that probably helped. I'm going to just turn the compression down a bit. But I can always turn the fan down low too. <laughs> but I got it. Thanks. Uh, can you give me a signal report? Like I said, you're 20 over. Uh, PR. Okay, I just uh, flipped over to my local antenna, and you look to be about uh, eight over my local noise level. Now, uh, I was monitoring you on the uh, Kentucky SDR, and you are about 15 over their noise level there. Roger, Roger. And you are about 15 over their noise level there. Roger, Roger. Okay, good. Well, that's just, that's 100 watts, Jim, so I'm very happy with that report. I appreciate it. Well... Thanks, Jim, once again for your help, and I will look for this weekend to uh, see what I sound like. Over. Yes, sir, in that last transmission, I did go around on my uh, uh, SDR antennas. I went around the uh, the horn, so you can, uh, as you're... Uh, if you go to YouTube and do that call letter search, KC9VKV, followed by the word logbook, uh, it will take you to uh, uh, this recording. It will be cut number one in a series of 2,800 QSO V-Log air check recordings. And as you're listening to your air check, uh, you'll notice that chevron on the right lower side, and that will indicate wh what I'm listening to at the time I'm listening to it. And you can see how you sound in Virginia, Georgia, Pennsylvania, New York, uh, uh, in uh, uh, my local antenna and my hocus focus antenna for the moment is in uh, Kentucky so you can hear those uh, what you sound like in those locations almost simultaneously Roger uh, what you sound like in those locations almost simultaneously Roger what a treat uh, I will look forward to that appreciate it Jim once again thanks for your service uh, appreciate all you do for the amateur community and have a good day, Jim. I'll say 73s. Roger, Roger, Terry, 73 there, sir. Thanks for dropping by. And uh, you have a great afternoon, beautiful weekend. And if you get a chance, join us next Friday. This is the Friday afternoon QSO VLOCnet. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. VLOCnet, if you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Station calling, uh, come back, try it again. Station calling, uh, come back, try it again. Whiskey Tango 8 Oscar. Whiskey Tango 8 Oscar, is that a Roger? Whiskey Tango 8 Oscar, is that a Roger? Roger, Roger. All righty, Oscar, what's the name there? Alrighty, Oscar, what's the name there? Uh, name here is Toby. Tango Oscar Bravo Yankee. QTH is located in uh, just south of Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, I heard you uh, transmitting and asking for uh, radio reports, and I'm trying a new homebrew NFID, and I'm not satisfied with the performance at this point. Over. All right, Toby, uh, give me that uh, radio again that you're running. All right, Toby, uh, give me that uh, radio again that you're running. Uh, radio here is an ICOM 746 Pro. Over.
Roger, Roger, 746 Pro. Uh, why don't you uh, tell me about the best thing you like about your radio? And let me listen to you for just a minute, Roger. Best thing you like about your radio? And let me listen to you for just a minute, Roger. Uh, this is a. Uh I just like the fact that it's easy to operate. I've used it at uh, field day every year, and uh, it's just a uh, well, just an easy radio to operate. I do have a new uh, Yaesu FTDX10, and I haven't hardly figured it out yet. So uh, I like the I like the icon for ease of use. Over. Uh, Roger that. Well, we have a good buddy that just decided to uh, start transmitting. It looks like about one uh, kilohertz off my frequency, so I've got a lot of uh, uh, antenna uh, or uh, um, trash coming in <laughs> with your signal. But uh, I do have a pretty good copy on you. Uh, I, you might want to check to be sure you're in that uh, that wide transmit band uh, width, uh, 100 to 2900 uh, for starters, Roger. It's uh, 100 to 2900 uh, for starters, Roger. Okay, I will double check that. Um, I've uh, got a... Uh, uh, stop for now. I got somebody at the front door. So if uh, you can excuse me, I appreciate it. It was good talking to you. 73 WT80. Roger, Roger, Toby, 73, sir. You have a great afternoon, beautiful weekend. This is the Friday afternoon QSO v like Network. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Like Network, if you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. All right, and uh, I think what we want to do is uh, go down towards uh, Florida. There's a couple of folks down there that uh, have been trying to uh, uh, access us and haven't been able to. So uh, hopefully um, we can uh, uh, do uh, some... Uh, I have uh, my Hocus Pocus SDR receiver, and then we'll go down to uh, my Florida inputs and uh, she uh, I got one in Sarasota um, that uh, would be probably pretty good uh, uh, Orlando actually let's try the Orlando SDR not getting uh, any response alright so uh, let me see here Castleberry Florida let me try that one No. All right, well, best laid plans of mice nor men. Uh, go back to my browser, kill that, and then we'll try it one more time for Orlando and see what we do there. Florida, oh, Boca Raton, oh, that's too far down. Um, Orlando, let me just see if we can get into there. No. Well, then. Let me try Boca Raton. We'll see what's going on there. That's uh, down between Miami and uh, West Palm Beach. Uh, let's see here. This is KC9 VKV listening down into Florida. Anybody down in Florida? Do they have a radio they want to check out? Golf Delta Mike. Uh, let's see here. Golf. Delta, Mike, uh, come back uh, slowly, phonetically, with your call sign. Yeah, Roger, Jim. Uh, this is Kilo Corvette 4, Golf Delta Mike. Right, uh, Golf Delta Mike, and uh, what's the name there? Uh, what's the name? Uh, my name is Sean. My name is Sean, and I had to do a quick tune there, so you may not have heard my uh, last bit there. But yeah, the call sign is Kilo Quebec 4, Golf Delta, Del Golf Delta Mike, and my name is Sean. Roger, Sean, and whereabouts are you located, sir? I'm located just uh, just outside of Orlando, uh, in a town called Apopka, Florida. And uh, it's about uh, 20 miles northeast of Orlando, Roger. 
Uh, Roger, I wish I could get my Orlando uh, SDR up. Uh, for some reason, it's not coming up, but uh, I th- I'm in Boca Raton uh, SDR right now. Uh, what radio are you running, Sean? Yes, sir. Sounds good. Now, I do have a a program uh, for the EQ of that uh, FTDX-10. Let me just uh, get down to that. Um, First, you want to be sure that your uh, mic EQ switch is on on that radio. Mic EQ switch is set to on. Roger, roger. All righty, uh, then uh, let's go to, uh, uh, i got to get to notes here. Um, uh, okay. All right, um, I'm getting to where we're, we're going here. Um, it, uh, let me just check something here. Um, I think that's uh, FTDX10, Roger. Okay. Uh, it starts with your um, your mid-range. We want to be sure that your mid-range uh, audio control is set to flat. Uh, always on your EQ, start with your mid-range EQ. That's EQ number two. Uh, set that to uh, flat, Roger. Roger, uh, I'm in that setting now, and it is, it's at plus 5 at 1400, so I will turn that down to flat or off. Okay, now it's off, Roger. Roger, now you're at a bass frequency, in, uh, which is EQ number 1, uh, bass control uh, set to 200 cycles, width of 4, level minus 6. So that's uh, EQ number one, the bass control, set to 200 cycles, width of four, level minus six. Roger. Okay, so I'm at level, I'm at negative two now, so I'll go to negative six, and now I'm on negative six. The bandwidth is on two right now, and I'll bump that up to four. Roger, Roger. And you want to be sure that you're in the P set of controls, uh, the P Papa set of EQ controls, since uh, uh, I'm assuming that you do have your compressor on. Roger? No, uh, my compressor's on right now. Yes, sir. Uh, and we want to set that compressor processor uh, to uh, th- uh, 30 out of uh, 100. Roger. I think you are 0 to 100 on the input of that uh, processor. So we want to set it to uh, to 30 out of 100. Roger. Okay, yep, I've got it. Uh, it was at 33, now I'm at 30 on the processor level. Roger. Yes, sir. Okay, now let's go back to EQ and uh, your uh, level with, uh, let's see here, your number three, uh, hang on just a minute. <laughs> um, Okay. EQ number three is your treble control, and we want to do uh, 2.7 kilohertz, width of four, level plus seven. So that's uh, EQ number three, which is the treble control. We want to set that at 2.7 kilohertz, width of four, level plus seven. Roger. So bandwidth now, I'm adjusting it now that's at four is the bandwidth and the level on EQ3 is uh, now it's at seven. So P parametric is 2700, level of seven, bandwidth of four, Roger. 
Yes, sir, that is correct. And uh, what I want you to do now is go back to your ALC. We're kind of working in reverse here. We want to go back to your ALC and uh, with Mike in in hand. And as you say the word adios, spoken just as you would speak any other word in a QSO, uh, adjust your Mike gain until your AOC meter is at 7. Roger? Okay, Roger. Um, audio. Audio, 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 audio. Yeah, so it's uh, uh, peaking between seven and nine. Um, there's also, uh, in, a, in addition to mic, mic gain on this radio, there's also AMC level. Um, and AMC level is set to 58, which uh, works with compression as well. Roger. Yes, sir. Uh, we want to set that AMC level to 65. AMC level set to uh, 65. Roger. 65. Roger. Oh, okay, Roger. I'm at 58 right now. So let me bump that up. Okay, now now AMC is at 65. Okay, that brought up the uh, AMC a little bit too. A little more consistently. Okay. Yeah, so I'm, uh, you know, on the signal meter, it's running. Uh, the AMC is running between 7 and 9 when I'm talking normally. Uh, audio, and it, it floats right to 9, uh, as I say the word audio. Yeah. Are you talking about your AOC meter? Uh, correct, yes. Uh, I'm talking about the AOC meter. It, it floats to about 9. It's not going into the, the plus zone at all. It's, it's between 7 and 9, Roger. Roger, we want to set that on 7, so uh, just uh, go back uh, with the mic gain in hand and uh, turn the mic down just slightly until you're, you're right on 7, right on 7 on your ALC meter, Roger. Roger, okay, so I'm on mic gain right now, the mic gain's at 53, uh, so yeah, I'm a little hot, okay, let me turn it down a little bit. Uh, yes, so that's where you want to be. Uh, I mean, you could be hotter than that and still be okay, but what happens is uh, a 7 gives you a 3 dB dynamic range, which uh, gives your, your wordage uh, some life, some movement. If you continue to push that, uh, you, your audio uh, words start to run together. You no longer have uh, any dynamic range or less dynamic range, and pretty soon it's just, uh, you know, like straight line, uh, as sounding like you're trying to contact Mars, you know. So at a 7, you have some life in your, your words, uh, but you're still loud, Roger, but you have no distortion, and, and the words sound crystal clear, Roger. distortion at all in my audio does uh you know sometimes you listen to people on the radio and their, their compression is running a little hot do you hear uh that kind of uh that that distorted audio sound that from the compressor roger no uh that's why we set it at a three out of 10 or 30 out of 100. It's a, a minimum amount, uh, something that you'll never hear on the air, but it does help uh, the processing a little bit and can controls the audio uh, a, a little bit, uh, but it, uh, you're not going to hear it on the air. That's why we chose a 3, Roger. So if, you're, if your processor is set at uh, uh, 0 to 100, you should be on 30. If it's uh, 0 to 10, you should be on 3, Roger, on your processor. Uh, 0 to 10, you should be on 3, Roger, on your processor. Yeah, that's, that's good to know. Thank you very much. Ooh, I got a phone call coming in. Um, I'll, I'll be right back.
Okay, one quick thing. Uh, just remember, you must stay in your processor uh, because if you come out of your processor, the EQs that we just set up will no longer be effective. So uh, you have to stay in your processor to utilize your P-Control uh, EQ settings. Stay in your processor to utilize your P-Control uh, EQ settings. This is KC9 VKV, the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Net. Uh, we're down in uh, Boca Raton, Florida. Anybody down in Florida want to uh, check out their radio? Raton, Florida. Anybody down in Florida want to uh, check out their radio? Alrighty, we're back up to our. Uh, uh, PASDR. This is the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Net. Uh, from uh, 3.30 till 5, we run live uh, and record all the way. So that you can uh, hear your radio. Uh, and if we set it up, you can hear the beginning of the setup, uh, the middle of the setup, and the end of the setup. And then you can see the difference between the beginning and the end of our setup. This is uh, KC9 VKV, Friday afternoon. Kiss over like net. If you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. Kiss over like net. If you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. the same settings be correct for everybody. Do us, sir. Do us, sir. Who was that uh, speaking there? Do you have a call sign? Who was that uh, speaking there? Do you have a call sign? Can't speak to those that do not have call signs or running their radios illegally. This is uh, KC9 VKV, Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Net. And l let me just explain something while we're here. I have a very uh, generic uh, setup procedure, a systematic uh, generic setup procedure. And uh, we touch all the, all the bases there, and uh, we get you set up uh, ballistically. I'm looking at this audio on my uh, 7300 audio output. I'm looking at uh, a view meter that shows me the ballistic capabilities uh, amplitude-wise of your audio, uh, the width of your dynamic range. And then we uh, are looking also at a spectrum analyzer uh, that we uh, use uh, sometimes to uh, set... Uh, bottom end, top end levels, relationship to mid-range. And we have all of those, but a lot of it is, is by ear, you know. Uh, so there you go. This is uh, the Friday afternoon uh, QSO VLOC Net. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. VLOC Net, if you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Was that the uh, Florida uh, station, uh, Roger? Uh, Sean, is that Roger? Sean, is that Roger? Correct, yeah, Roger. That, uh, this is me, Sean, and I'm just saying thank you for uh, your help on that adjustment. I really appreciate it. All righty. Uh, did you get that last one about uh, top end EQ? Uh, what, uh, let's see here. We were... In the PQ con P con uh, EQ controls and uh, the top end treble, uh, 2.7 kilohertz with the four level plus seven. Roger, Roger. Yep, that's where I have it. Um, 2700 and the EQ level is seven, same with the four. Yes, sir. And then go back to your AOC and reset your AOC level because we've, you know, we've uh, extensively redid your EQ. So uh, it'll be back to your uh, AOC meter audio with Mike Gain in hand and adjust for seven. Roger. Uh, 
trying to get it on, so I guess you can turn it down. Uh, idea. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Okay, now yeah, it looks good. All right, uh, so I guess we got it. We need to get that uh, gorilla tape and taper down, Roger, Roger. Yeah, Roger. Uh, I, I listen to you every Friday. I don't usually call in uh, or you know make a shout, but uh, you're coming in at uh, 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 a nine plus ten. I mean, you're, you're really strong. The signal is amazing. Uh, you can see them fighting with noise, but for whatever reason, the noise is the jam is really low today. Um, but uh, I was wondering, well, what's my uh, what's my signal over there for you? Or are you getting me, you know, pretty good above the noise, Roger? Well, I just moved down to my uh, Georgia SDR, and uh, you look to be about uh, 10 dB above the Georgia SDR noise level. Now, you know, noise depends on where you are. Uh, let me uh, go up to my local antenna, which is up in uh, Kentucky, and let me see what I got there. Uh, come back and tell me about your antenna system. Yeah, let me see what I got there. Uh, come back and tell me about your antenna system. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, antenna system. And uh, it's just a vertical with uh, some radials that, that lay on the ground. And uh, that's hooked up with about 75 feet of LMR 400 coax to uh, FTDX-10. To uh, FTDX-10, Roger. Already, I uh, got about, uh, oh gosh, not not a very good signal on my local antenna in Kentucky. It's probably about a four or something like that uh, above the noise level. Uh, that uh, Boca Raton SDR is giving me about a seven over. I'm getting about a 10 over on the uh, Georgia SDR. So you're really looking good uh, up in Georgia, Roger. Georgia SDR. So you're really looking good uh, up in Georgia, Roger. Oh, Roger, that's great. And when you record the audio to the YouTube channel, are you typing the SDR audio uh, to the video? Is that what I would hear if I listen to it, Roger? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have a Chevron on the right-hand side of my screen, uh, lower right-hand side, that will tell you what uh, the audio, where the audio is coming from, where I'm listening, and I'm listening to the audio, and you'll hear it switch. Uh, I have a six-position rotary switch, which uh, uh, controls all the SDRs. I have five SDRs plus my local receiver, and they're all shown on the Chevron, and so you just follow the Follow the light, and you'll uh, see where I am at the time. And it's very quick when I switch, so you'll be able to hear the white noise difference between uh, the one place and the other place, Roger. Noise difference between uh, the one place and the other place, Roger. Yes, yes, I will uh, I'll watch that and uh, take a look at it. And uh, just watching your voice on my oscilloscope uh, that's built into the radio um, and the... Uh, any uh, audio frequency um, display as well, and if, if you were to like look at it like equalize your 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 signal sounds, it, it looks really good and it sounds good too. Over. Roger, Roger. Uh, I have a um, a uh, spectrum analyzer on the set that uh, the actual audio that you hear of me on the set is local audio. It's not transmitted audio. Uh, it's uh, mixed audio, uh, but I do have a spectrum analyzer that is looking at all the audio, whether it's mine or yours or whatever. So uh, when, uh, when I'm not speaking, I'm looking at my receiver uh, uh, spectrum analyzer no, uh, sound, Roger. And when you see speaking, then I'm looking at uh, noise. Uh, uh, spectrum analyzer is looking at the noise on that uh, band right, or that frequency, Roger? Looking at the noise on that uh, band right, or that frequency, Roger? Yeah, Roger. Um, yes, it looks great and uh, you sound very good. It's, it's uh, amazing. Um, you know, not much QRM or uh, noise floor today. Uh, we've had a lot of rain the last three or four days for some reason that seems to you know, put some water on Coming in really, really strong uh, this week. Uh, very, very strong this week for sure. Over. Roger. So I just went now from my Georgia SDR to my Boca Raton uh, SDR.
And uh, you're just uh, sounding beautiful. So uh, uh, get the Gorilla Tape out and tape her down there, sir. I think uh, I think we've got a good handle on it. I think you'll like your recording. Uh, go to YouTube, do a call letter search, KC9VKV, followed by the word logbook. That will take you to this recording. Uh, it'll be cut number one in a series of 2,800 Kiso V. Laguerre check recordings. And I'll have it uploaded by noon tomorrow. Roger. Thank you very much, Jim, and uh, you have a good weekend, okay? And uh, God bless you, and uh, thanks for what you do out here. Uh, 73 from KC4 Golf Delta Mike. Roger, Roger, Sean, and make note of where you are in proximity to your microphone. Run it just like you are, because you're just just perfect, just like that. So uh, make a note of that uh, where you are, and uh, uh, so and work that microphone just like that. Uh, Seventy-three, Sean. Uh, have a good afternoon, great uh, weekend, and we'll see you next Friday if you get a chance. Uh, this is KC9 VKV, the Friday afternoon QSO VlogNet. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Check out. Give me a shout. We're lingering just a moment in the Boca Raton area for uh, Florida traffic. Any Florida traffic? We're listening on our Boca Raton SDR. Nothing heard, so we're back uh, to our uh, Pennsylvania SDR. This is KC9 VKV, a Friday afternoon QSO VLOGNET. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. VLOGNET, if you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Hey, uh, 4 and one Station calling, come back slowly, phonetically with your call sign. Station calling, come back slowly, phonetically with your call sign. Alpha Fox Rod 4, November, Yankee. Alpha Fox Rod 4, November, Yankee, is that a Roger? Alpha Fox Rod 4, November, Yankee, is that a Roger? That's correct, uh, named Clayson, located in northeast Alabama. Okay, uh, what's the name again? Okay, uh, what's the name again? Clayton. USL. Uh, phonetically, please. Uh, phonetically, please. Charlie Lima Alpha Yankee Tango Oscar November. Clayton, is that a uh, Roger? Clayton, is that a uh, Roger? Yes, that's correct. Roger Clayton, and whereabouts are you located, sir? Roger Clayton, and whereabouts are you located, sir? Uh, northeast Alabama, about midway between Birmingham and Atlanta. Alrighty, and what radio are you running today, Clayton? Alrighty, and what radio are you running today, Clayton? Uh, this is the 756 Pro 3, uh, running into a Meritron AL 1200. And i uh, got a fan, uh, 40 to 80 meter fan dipole. Roger, Roger. Uh, and uh, what is the vintage of that radio? Is that a newer radio or an older radio? No. What is the vintage of that radio? Is that a newer radio or an older radio? Uh, it's an older radio. I bought this thing back, I think, in 06. Or maybe not that, maybe a little later than that. But it's, I've had it for a few years. I just haven't operated much on it. I've been in, almost inactive for years. Yes, sir. So I'm assuming that you have a fixed uh, uh, transmit bandwidth. You do not have an adjustable uh, transmit bandwidth. Is that a Roger? You do not have an adjustable uh, transmit bandwidth. Is that a Roger? I'm sorry. I, I missed that. Uh, TBW, transmit bandwidth. Or are you familiar with that? Uh, TBW, transmit bandwidth. Or are you familiar with that? Uh, not quite, no. Uh, like I said, it's, uh, I'm looking at it right now, and I'm trying to see what, I, what I'm, uh, let me see if I get the scope back up. I haven't uh, touched this thing in quite a long time. Well, the, dynamically, you look to be running about a 3 dB dynamic range in your audio, so that's just perfect. Uh, that's where we would set it. Uh, if you have uh, onboard EQ, I would crank in about three clicks uh, additional treble EQ from where you are, Roger. Uh, 
about three clicks uh, additional treble EQ from where you are, Roger. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I'm still looking at this thing. I don't have any compression in right now. Let me turn the compressor off. Okay, uh, this is now a compression. How does it sound? Uh, how does this sound? Well, uh, gosh, uh, when you put your compressor in there, it does uh, it does reshape your audio, uh, and not very well. You get very th very thin audio when you put the compression in at that. I guess you have uh, a different uh, uh, levels, uh, different uh, choices, uh, and I, I don't really like that when you when it affects your audio uh, EQ that much just compression compression to my way of thinking compression should just be compression not uh, that it should affect your eq uh, circumstance at all so i would go ahead and just uh, you sounded beautiful without that compressor and uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't run it because it just thins you roger and uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't run it because it just thins you roger yeah and uh, the microphone is just the handheld that came with the radio I haven't found anything else that's better. Uh, that it sounds any better, according to uh, people that know me. They say that this microphone does sound the best. Yes, sir. It does sound good. It does sound good. Uh, I would crank in just a little bit. If you have an EQ page uh, and adjustable equalization, I would crank in uh, uh, 3 dB more top end EQ, 3 dB more treble EQ than where you are. Uh, plus three clicks, treble EQ, additional from where you are, just to brighten it up just a tad, Roger. Additional from where you are, just to brighten it up just a tad, Roger. I understand what you're saying. i got to get the book out. Like I said, it's, uh, <laughs> I didn't operate this radio much. Uh, I had the uh, the twins, and I ran that for years. And uh, I bought this, and then I pretty well it went inactive for quite a long time. And lately, the last six months, I've been putting the station back together. I got the uh, tower up, and I, uh, I, had, I had an old TH6DX uh, antenna I put it up with there. That's operating. And uh, a little bit of that, a uh, little bit as I go, I'll, I'll pretty well get it where I want. Uh, it'll, it'll take me a little bit. Yes, sir. Well, you know, uh, hopefully we have time to do what we want to do, uh, you know, uh, uh, but uh, you know we can only do what we can do when we can do it. Uh, uh, let's see, I was going to mention something else. Uh, oh yeah, that the hand mic. I think you're working that hand mic uh, uh, to the side uh, of your lips and talking across it. I haven't heard any uh, uh, plosives or anything uh, uh, ripping up on that microphone. So I think you're uh, probably running that microphone to the side of your lips and talking across it, Roger. Running that microphone to the side of your lips and talking across it, Roger? Uh, something like that. Okay, this is directly into it, and this is off to the side of it. Yes, sir. Always better uh, uh, off to the side of it uh, as directly into it because uh, you will have less... Uh, turbulence uh, uh, sh with your words going past it as opposed directly into it, particularly if that's an electret condenser uh, a voice element in that hand mic uh, like so many of them are today. Uh, you definitely want to work that mic uh, to the side of your lips, actually touch the side of your lips and, and talk across it. Roger? Lips, actually touch the side of your lips and, and talk across it. Roger? I do understand what you're saying. That's usually the way I do. I usually have the thing uh, uh, positioned about uh, six to eight inches away from and to the side. Go ahead. Yes, sir. And uh, your, I think your audio level is just fine. Uh, I can hear uh, a little bit of activity in the background, but it's very low. It's not distracting at all. I can only very per barely perceive it. So I think you're just uh, good to go, bud. I would uh, get the Gorilla Tape out and taper down. And if you want to hear your audio, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for KC9VKV, followed by the word logbook, that will take you to this recording. It'll be cut number one in a series of 2,800 QSO VLOG air check recordings. Recordings. I'll have it uploaded by noon tomorrow, and I'm copying the mail on my uh, Georgia SDR. Roger. In the mail on my uh, Georgia SDR. Roger. Okay, where in Georgia are you located? Uh, this is, uh, I'm not sure. It's either Simmons Island or Atlanta, right in that area. Roger. Either Simmons Island 
or Atlanta? R right in that area, Roger. Okay, yeah, you're about 100 miles uh, to the east of me. Yes, sir, I have found that uh, about 100 to 130 miles from the target is probably the best place to uh, uh, be looking for the best signal. You know, but I usually try in the hometown of the person that I'm talking to just by uh, the wild chance that they might be in good proximity to the uh, SDR on their, uh, you know, in their local town. And then I try to move back to about 100. 30 miles from their location. That seems to be uh, uh, first first uh, bounce, Roger. That seems to be uh, uh, first first uh, bounce, Roger. Okay, got you. I, uh, like I said, I'm still fooling with everything. Uh, I think I got everything just about the way I want it. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, there's no uh, ballum on the, uh, on the fan dipole. I'm running it through an AT2K Telstar uh, tuna. And this pretty well, uh, I got uh, the SWO as low as I could get it at uh, 7150, and that's about the way I usually operate. Roger, Roger. Well, the thing is, uh, uh, what I've noticed is if you're, you know, do you have any idea what your SWR is uh, without your tuner? You know, do you have any idea what your SWR is uh, without tuner? Uh, let's say, uh... Okay, uh, I got two watts reflected. Out of? Out of? One second, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, hit the CW. Alright, that was 1500 with four watts reflected. Wow, that's pretty good. I was just curious that, uh, you know, uh, uh, sometimes um, when folks have to run their antenna tuners, they can be uh, quite uh, quite lossy. Uh, uh, I was, you know, I'm running now a, a, um, a tuned uh, uh, dipole antenna for transmit. I, I uh, have many receiver antennas all around the country, but uh, in transmit I, I stay on my... Uh, my uh, tuned uh, uh, S, uh, dipole antenna, so I don't have to run a uh, antenna tuner on it. But uh, earlier in my life, uh, I was um, running a, a, a an 80 meter antenna on 40 meters, and I was using an antenna tuner uh, to uh, make it work. And uh, I did uh, detect quite a bit of heat coming off my. Um, antenna tuner. So I know that, uh, y you know, uh, you got to use those antenna tuners to make it work sometimes if you have uh, uh, large uh, S uh, SWR because of mismatch and all that stuff. But uh, I just uh, decided I want all my heat to go up to the <laughs> antenna as opposed to uh, being consumed down in my antenna tuner, Roger. As opposed to uh, being consumed down in my antenna tuner, Roger. Okay, got you. I uh, I uh, used to run a 130 foot dipole, uh, 65 on each leg, and I went through a tuna, and I did that for years and had pretty good uh, 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 pretty good reception and uh, and also transmitting off of it, and I did that for quite a few years, and then I decided to build myself a ham shack, so I uh, got an and constructed one and got a tower because I. I'm not from here, I'm from further south in New Orleans, and I had a, you know, long 25G, and I'm up, in, I'm up in my 80s now. My wife said, no, nope, there's no way you're going to climb, so you're going to get yourself a tower. So she, she got it for me, and, uh, and, and I've been playing with it. I'm getting it back together. i got a little few more things I want to do with it, and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, i got a two-meter ring at about 80-something feet up. Uh, the apex on my on my uh, on my dipole right now, my fan dipole, is about 50 to 55 feet, and uh, it both uh, top uh, to a southeast uh, direction, right? 
Roger, Roger. Now, uh, that last couple of words, I went to my local antenna uh, up in Kentucky here, and uh, uh, I'm on uh, uh, just across the river from Louisville, Kentucky. I'm on the Indiana side of the Ohio River right at Louisville, and uh, gosh, you're, you're sounding great there too, Roger. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I got a, a Wild 100 that I've had for years. It's probably 50 years old. And I tried to go ahead and get it online to take a look at uh, at uh, my uh, transiting, and uh, uh, it's not working properly. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get into it and find out what's wrong with it. It's probably just old capacitors or something that may be in that uh, in that scope, and I'll have to get it out. There's one more thing that I got. Later. I got my two meter rig back on. I had to do some work on it. Uh, I just put in a computer into the shack. And uh, like I said, I'm slowly but surely I'm getting back together. Yes, sir. Now remember, uh, on that tower, if you're running vertical polarization, you want to stay off that tower by about two feet. Uh, it will play with your. If you have a, a a directional antenna for two meters or whatever uh, UHF, uh, if you pull that right in next to the tower, uh, it will affect uh, your radiated power because you have two vertical planes moving side by side. And uh, so anytime you have that, you have uh, a, um, a uh, distortion that will occur with the uh, directionality of the uh, beam antenna. So you want to keep uh, your beams uh, vertically, if they're vertically polarized, you want to keep them about two foot off the uh, off the tower. Uh, and uh, let's see. Uh, also, on your uh, your dipole, there would probably be a good idea to uh, to suspend that dipole a couple of feet off the tower, so you don't have any uh, interaction there, Roger. Yes, I do have it uh, pulled away from the tower. And uh, the two meter wave, let's see, should be at about 80 feet. Uh, the tower is a 72 footer, and then I got the uh, eight, eight mass wing up there to 80 feet, and then I have the two meter, which I uh, really, uh, there's not much activity here, so I usually don't get on that, but just in case, uh, tornado season and everything else, it's a good thing to have. Yes, sir. And, uh, you can make your tower work for you. Uh, uh, you can make that interplay between the tower and your uh, your uh, vertical antenna uh, work uh, together by putting the uh, the antenna on the side of the uh, uh, area that you're trying to cover. In other words, uh, if uh, you're trying to cover something to the north of your tower, if you put your antenna to the north of the tower, uh, then uh, you will be using that tower as a, uh, a directional uh, uh, reflector, Roger? Uh, no, it's just an omnidirectional uh, two-meter antenna. It says, uh, I do not have a, uh, a directional antenna. It's just omnidirectional. Yes, so I'm just saying, if you put it on the north side of your tower, your tower will be the director or, or, or the reflector by the proximity effect of your antenna. And uh, so you will be uh, utilizing your tower uh, to further uh, increase your signal to the direction of the antenna that it's uh, direction that is mounted on on the, t on the tower. Even though it's a non-directional antenna, it will exhibit some directionality because it will interact with the uh, the metallic tower that's uh, in back of it. So uh, if you want a, a certain area you're covering, you want to put your antenna on that side of the tower. Roger. I understand what you're saying. Of course, I have to find the direction I would like to transmit in because, uh, like I said, I'm not, uh, I don't have much activity around here, and the little I do have, I have no problem. It seems to be uh, 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 perfect for what, it, what I use it for, so I don't think it's necessary that I look for any directivity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm just saying you would be maximized by putting the... That, that's an old um, repeater... Um, uh, positioning situation that you always, uh, when you side mount a repeater antenna, uh, you always put it on the side of the uh, uh, side that you want to cover, uh, you know, th that you're offering cover to. 
uh, so and it just uh, increases the uh, capabilities of it uh, on the side that you're uh, it's AOL uh, let's see um, um, I forget what the call the uh, formula is now but anyway you just utilize the antenna on the side that you're you're working Roger okay thank you for the info and uh, I'll take that and keep that in mind like I said I got a, I got a little more work I got to do uh, and so I got a little bit of time work and fold it over and, you know, do all that's necessary. And uh, not, not right now, because it's, uh, it's the Christmas season, and the wife's got all kind of uh, plans uh, with the kids and all. It's a couple of weeks now, so I won't be doing anything. And then usually about uh, January, February, the, the weather just becomes... Uh, to the point that you don't want to go outside and do anything. So it might be in the spring before I do anything. Oh, there she is. She's calling me. Uh, Got to go to the house. What's your name? I forgot. Uh, name here is Jim Juliet India. Mike. Call is Kilo Charlie Nine. Victor Kilo Victor. QTH is uh, uh, just beside Louisville, Kentucky, on the Indiana side of the Ohio River, right at Louisville. Roger. Okay, I got you, Jim. I I wrote it down here, and uh, I, I missed your call sign before, but you give me one more time, I want to log in. Yes, sir. Kilo, Charlie, 9, Victor, Kilo, Victor. And if you want to hear your great audio, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo, Charlie, 9, Victor, Kilo, Victor, followed by the word logbook, that will take you to this recording. I'll have it uploaded by noon tomorrow. Roger. Okay, thanks again, Jim. Let me, let me get out there. I know she's. Uh, we got the kids coming over tomorrow, and she's got a lot of cooking and a lot of cookies she's got to make. And I think that's what she wants me to get in there to give her a hand. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm in my 80s, and she's in her late 70s. And we're, you know, we got to do a little bit of uh, together to keep one from being overwhelmed. So uh, thanks again, Jim. KC9 VKV AF4 and Y73. Roger, Roger, Clayton, seventy-three there, sir, and I understand. But my, in my case, uh, I'm uh, I'm a tester man, and uh, many times I'll be uh, testing more than she's fixing. <laughs> <laughs> At the, simultaneously with her, her fixing, I'm testing. Oh, well, anyway. 73 Clayton, catch you later. Have a good day. This is the uh, Cuso Vlog Net for uh, Friday afternoon. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Kilo Bravo 8, Charlie Romeo. Okay, station calling. Uh, come back slowly, phonetically with your call sign. Bravo 8, Charlie Romeo. Kilowatt, Bravo 8, Charlie Romeo. Yep. All right, uh, Charlie Romeo, uh, what's the name there? Name here is Charlie. My name is Charlie, and we're located in Cincinnati, Ohio. All right, Charlie, and what radio are you running, sir? We are on a Army um, 2 uh currently doing about 75 watts uh, with an uh, external amplifier, an amplifier to June uh, 100. And uh, we're into a uh, doublet that's up about 50 feet. Uh, which is tuned by top about 50 feet, uh, which is tuned by an SBB tuner. Yes, sir, Charlie. Now, uh, I'm uh, detecting some kind of uh, anomaly in your audio. I've heard it sometimes on my SDR uh, links coming back, but it does sound like uh, um, your RF might be getting into your uh, uh, your transmission, your uh, your SDR link in. Uh, it does sound like something's uh, uh, interrupting or playing havoc with your... Are you using an SDR uh, audio input to your radio to transmit? Well, I'm using uh, a 
But it's actually a Bluetooth headset uh, which is going into the uh, computer and the computer uh, and put it on the Roger, Charlie. Well, I'm getting a lot of uh, stuttering. I'm getting a lot of stuttering in your connection. Uh, uh, if you have a regular mic, I would, uh, I would think, uh, uh, I would like to hear that uh, versus the Bluetooth. Roger, Roger. I'd like to do that. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, I don't have an interface connected to my XLR mic to the computer yet. I plan to get that soon. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, well, gosh, uh, are you running uh, uh, over 100 watts? Are you running right at 100 watts? No, uh, currently we're about 75 watts, right at about 75 watts now. All righty. Uh, st station, we uh, are using the frequency. Frequency is a new station. Tuning up, uh, we are in use. Uh, we're talking to uh, Charlie, uh, uh, SCR, and uh, gosh, uh, trying to, to copy that, uh, KB8. Uh, CR. There we go. <laughs> By this day, my uh, my lettering is uh, bleeding into each other. Uh, what I'm saying, though, is uh, that your Bluetooth is uh, being disturbed by something. It it sounds somewhat like uh, maybe you're out of range on your Bluetooth, and it's uh, gar garbling uh, quite a bit. Roger. Yes, sir. Uh, picking up quite a bit of room noise also, so I'm not sure, you know, what you wanted to do about that. It would be probably cleaner if the uh, modulation level was a little bit lower. Uh, are you familiar with the... Uh, give me that uh, nomenclature on your radio again. What radio are you running? <laughs> Uh, radio is a Chrome Blade 2. It's a um, subset of the non-radio. Uh, it's the QRP radio. Uh, it's the QRP radio, and um, it's uh, running into an amplifier externally. Yes, sir. Now, are you uh, are you adding reverb, or is that just your room echo? Are you adding reverb, or is that just your room echo? Well, unfortunately, this is, uh, I'm speaking into a monitor with a cord connected back into the room. Uh, this is a horrible way to talk, uh, but uh, unfortunately, like I said, I don't have uh, an interface to connect my actual microphone to the uh, to the computer yet because of that kind of Roger, Charlie. Well, gosh, uh, best laid plans of mice nor men. I think I would ditch uh, the Bluetooth stuff and just go uh, directly with uh, a microphone to the input uh, to your radio. Uh, that way you will uh, get past a bunch of, uh, of stuff that uh, you're having to deal with now. You're, you're glitching uh, and you're breaking up and uh, you're, you have a great deal of room noise and the combination of that makes you almost impossible to cipher what you're saying. So if you go direct uh, I think you'll be able to uh, bring your audio down uh, and set it uh, properly uh, to your AOC uh, meter and uh, not have any uh, any dropouts or not have any glitching. Roger, Roger. Uh, any dropouts or not have any glitching. Roger, Roger.
QSL, um, well, you're on a NPR file or data like this, and there is no direct connection uh, from the microphone to the radio. Uh, it yeah. all goes through the computer. Uh, unfortunately, uh, like I said, I have an interface to connect the microphone directly to the computer. Uh, it'll be a lot better if you do that. But, uh, for right now, uh, <laughs> I'm sort of stuck with it. I'm just playing with it. This is my secondary radio. Uh, my normal radio uh, is a flat. So. Yes, sir, Charlie. Um, okay, I'm going to leave your radio. Uh, try your radio uh, model uh, again, very slowly, and let me get a copy on it. Very slowly, uh, phonetically. Very slowly, and let me get a copy on it. Very slowly, uh, phonetically. Okay, the radio is a homey light. Hotel, echo, logo, echo, yeah. Lima, India, Tango, Echo, number two. Uh Yes, sir, Charlie. Okay, Uh, I tell you what, if you, uh, I think you should uh, check out your audio that I've recorded so you can understand exactly what you're sounding like. And you'll understand what I mean when I say uh, you are, you're breaking up and sometimes your packets from the Bluetooth uh, in are, are getting, actually one is uh, getting in front of the other. So you have uh, some distortion, a great deal of distortion coming off your Bluetooth, and then you have uh, the room noise to deal with. So it's uh, quite awkward to, to be able to copy the mail. And I, like I say, I am recording. So if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for KC9VKV, followed by the word logbook, that will take you to this recording. And I'll have it uploaded by noon tomorrow, Roger. And I'll have it uploaded by noon tomorrow, Roger. Station uh, frequencies in use. Frequencies in use station. Station uh, frequencies in use. Frequencies in use station. So, uh, uh, Charlie, did you copy my last transmission? So, uh, uh, Charlie, did you copy my last transmission? Just fine. Well, thank you, sir. Actually, he's got the problem. Could you copy him earlier? Yes, sir. Actually, he's got the problem. Could you copy him earlier? Yeah, I could copy him. His audio was terrible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was suggesting that that he uh, check out my recording on YouTube, that he could hear just uh, what folks are dealing with when they're trying to copy his mail. But uh, anyway... Uh, uh, Charlie, you still there? Oh, but uh, anyway, uh, uh, Charlie, you still there? Well, well, gosh, uh, here we are uh, at a uh, few minutes past five. I got to get out of here. Uh, see what the clock on the wall? There's a dead fly. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So since three uh, thirty, we've been uh, uh, broadcasting and helping folks uh, get their radios squared away. And uh, so we got to get out of here. If you have participated and would like to hear your audio, if you go to YouTube, do a call letter search for KC Nine VKV, followed by the word logbook. That will uh, bring this recording up. It'll be cut number one in a series of twenty eight hundred. And I'll have it uploaded by noon tomorrow. So without further ado, let me uh, get out of here and uh, return this frequency back to normal amateur radio use. This is KC9 VKV Clear.